After winning the first two games of their five-game West Coast trip, the New York Knicks dropped one to the defending NBA champs. That would be the Golden State Warriors in San Francisco on Friday night. And my guy, CP, the franchise, he was out in the Bay Area at the game, the host of Knicks Fan TV. You see him pointing to the hat right there. He joins me now. CP, how was your time in San Francisco? Dexter, always a pleasure to be with you on the beautiful Saturday. The weather is great here in San Francisco. Had a chance to do some sightseeing. Got a chance to walk across the Golden Gate Bridge yesterday. Nice. I was here for business, and I was here to see the Knicks take on the, Go the Golden State Warriors, the world champions, and, you know, give credit to the Warriors. They came out with desperation. They came out with intensity, with a championship mindset, coming off of a tough loss in Phoenix. And the Knicks, who... Had two nice wins on the on to start the trip against Utah and Denver, respectively. Just could not meet that intensity. The Knicks found themselves down by 16 points, ultimately 21 points, and it was just an uphill battle for the Knicks all night. Yeah, it was an uphill battle for them all night, CP. You you mentioned it. We saw some fight from the Knicks early this week, Utah and Denver, as you said. Yeah. But when you look at this game and what happened against Golden State, okay, they're the champs. But what were your what was your takeaways in this game for what they were able to do, what they showed against the Warriors? Well, a few things. Number one, the shooting just wasn't there, right? Uh, coming into this into this matchup, the Knicks were shooting fairly well from three, only shooting 26% from three on this night, and give credit to the Warriors. I thought their defense was excellent last night. Uh, the Knicks only 16 assists last night, where they averaged 25 assists in the last two road games as well. So the ball movement really wasn't there, and overall their energy wasn't there. We also have to look at R.J. Barrett shooting four for 30 from downtown from the three-point mark over his last five games. Games. And RJ, from what the Knicks are saying, has been under the weather and has been ill. But the question mark is, why is Tom Thibodeau continuing to play him long minutes and, and allowing him to play through the slump? I understand that Tom Thibodeau wants a shortened rotation to give guys a rhythm. But at the same time, last night he had two capable, efficient shooters on the bench in Quentin Grimes and Evan Fournier and did not to look to those guys at one at at, one, at, at any point in, in the game. And so you have to kind of question that there. Yes, you want rhythm in a shortened rotation, but in a night where the Knicks were not shooting well, those guys, especially Quentin Grimes, needs to find a way onto the court. I'm glad you mentioned R.J. Barrett there because, as you said, he continues to struggle shooting the ball. We know he's been battling a cold for the past week or so, but – What's your level of concern with his recent shooting slump here? Well, RJ has always been an inconsistent shooter uh, across all of his last three seasons. But to whom much is given, much is expected. And RJ Barrett, having signed that four-year, $120 million contract extension, Knicks fans and the organization are going to expect a consistent thorough two-way performance from R.J. Barrett, and, and right now he just hasn't been living up to it. And so you hope that he can break out of that slump, but at the same time, I'd like to see Tom Thibodeau say, okay, he doesn't have it. Let's see if Quentin Grimes can get into this rotation and give us a spark on both ends. Let's see if Evan Fournier can give us uh, some three-point shooting because, you know, for R.J. Barrett, he almost played 40 minutes last night, and he's continuing to slump, continuing to not finish well at the basket. I think Tom Thibodeau should have went to, to his bench to give us a lift. It would have been nice to see some adjustments there with the rotation. Now, 16 games in CP. The Knicks, let's say what they are. They're mediocre 8-8. Eight and eight. When you look at the roster, there have been some names reported to be brought up in trade discussions. Emmanuel Quickly, Derrick Rose, we've heard those names reported. Is there a need for the Knickerbockers to make a move to consolidate their roster here? Yes, I think there is. And, and as our guy Ian Begley had mentioned earlier this week, both Derrick Rose and Emmanuel Quickly's name have come up in trade rumors. Uh, the Knicks have a bevy of young talent on their roster. They also have 11 first-round picks in the next seven years. And so right now, with the Knicks not having much top-end talent, Leon Rose has his work cut out for him, and how will he improve the team going forward? And the one thing is, is that, you know, with Emmanuel Quickly and Derrick Rose being on the trade block, th there's also a Jay Crowder out there, things, guys of, of that caliber, those type of veterans. But those type of moves only keep the Knicks in middling ground. They only keep them mediocre. The Knicks have to make a move for their future to either put them in serious, legitimate playoff contention or to pair it back, trading some of your veterans like an Evan Forty and a Derrick Rose, continuing with the youth movement and drafting more young talent hopefully at the top end of the NBA draft. And this year, this draft class is supposed to be stacked. Supposed to be stacked. As you know, CPI, you talk about it all the time on Knicks Fan TV. 
Purgatory is not where you want to be in the NBA right in the middle. I know that's not where you want to see the Knicks. That is CP, the franchise. Check him out on Knicks Fan TV. You also see him sometimes on the putback with Ian Begley out there in the Bay representing CP. Good to see you. Always good to talk. Some Knicks hoops. Thanks. Going to go do some more sightseeing, man. Thanks again for having me on. Anytime. Enjoy the Bay, man. Thank you. Thank you.